अच्छा सो सो फेब्री मार्च ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री एंड दैट्स क्वेश्चन पेपर थ्री थ्री ठीक है सो सो वी कैन डू द फर्स्ट कपल ऑफ क्वेश्चन now uh, the question states that there are some metal carbonates that are occur in basic form which means that the metal hydroxide is also present in the formula and the formula of one basic form of zinc carbonate is this so they've uh, they've given you the formula of that particular zinc carbonate and x is an integer so i think they want to find out what x is in this in this experiment you will carry out thermal decomposition to find out the relative uh, formula mass mr and the value of x for the sample of basic zinc carbonate so they they're doing thermal decomposition and when you when you decompose a uh, zinc carbonate it will produce uh, zinc oxide and carbon dioxide and if you decompose uh, zinc hydroxide it will also produce uh, zinc oxide and water plus uh, plus there's going to be water coming from the water of crystallization as well so so i think there would be like if i try to balance it there's going to be three zinc oxides uh two water molecules will form from this zinc hydroxide yeah i think two and then there's x water molecules that are going to be produced from the from the water of crystallization as well right so i guess that's that's what's going to happen and the solid that's going to remain is going to be this when you decompose all the all the other stuff all of this stuff they it will be in the form of gases right is that clear yes now um so the method right he's weighing the empty crucible now the first thing is you have to learn i mean you should know how to make a proper proper table so mass of empty crucible with lead right i mean the first so mass of empty crucible with lead and it's going to be slash grams and it's going to have a certain value uh, remember to write the value exactly to what's given in the when you're weighing it with a, with a with an electronic electronic balance transfer all the fa1 from the container into the crucible weigh the crucible lead and fa1 so so now it's uh, now it's mass of crucible it's no longer empty uh with lead and fa1 slash grams and you you're going to write some value in front of it um place the crucible and contents on a pipe clay triangle heat the crucible gently with the lid on for approximately 1 minute and then heat strongly so so normally this is how decomposition happens that you first heat it gently that is to ensure that the water evaporates first because uh the water causes spitting if you if you heat the water very quickly it turns into gas like uh, water boils right so there would be a lot of spitting and hissing and that uh the solid might burst into smaller pieces so things might fall off so you heat it gently and then you heat it strongly for a further 4 minutes and you replace the lead and leave the uh, crucible to cool for at least 5 minutes when the crucible is cooled weigh the crucible with its lead and contents record the mass place the crucible on the remove the lead uh he was heating it without lead right Weigh the crucible. Place the crucible in contents with the lid off, right? So he's taking off the lid as well when you're heating it. Pla place the crucible in contents and the remove the lid. Heat the crucible strongly for further two minutes. Replace the lid and leave the crucible to cool for five minutes. So he he does it twice. Um, and did he measure the mass the first time? Yeah, record. 
So the next statement would be, because you have to record the mass. So mass of crucible with lead and FA1 after the first heating. And then you're going to do the same thing and F1 after the second time you're heating it and slash grams. So that's going to complete record the mass of the, of the residue obtained. Leave with the crucible record the mass. Normally what happens is you heat it till constant mass. Over here, the instructions clearly state that you heat it twice. Uh, but normally what you do is you keep on repeatedly heating it until the mass stops changing. That ensures that all the gases have been produced. So where we're just going to follow him. I think it's going to ask us whether whether decomposition was complete or not. If after the second heating, the mass was still changing, that meant the reaction was still going on. But anyways, calculate the amount in moles of zinc oxide formed, formed after heating. So amount of moles. So we're just going to come up with a hypothetical value. Let's say I've got... Uh, I've got 1.50 grams. So I can figure the moles. You can make sure you show sure you're working. And zinc is what 65.4. Yes, can each other this. Zinc is 65.4. As do you have a calculator with you? Try yes. to Plus 16. 81.4. So number of moles is 0 0.01843. 0 0.01843. 0 Three second figures is fine. So 0 0.0184. Now he's hence calculate the amount in moles of basic zinc carbonate uh, in your sample. So or you can do that divide by three, right? So what is what is that? Um, it's zero point zero zero six one four. And then use your answer to calculate uh, the relative formula mass MR of basic zinc carbonate. So let's say that was uh, three point. I mean, this was three point one two grams, hypothetically speaking. So, so what will be the MR? The MR will come out to be uh, uh mass over moles. So what do you get, what do you get for the MR? Five oh seven point nine. Okay, so five oh seven point nine. Uh, now you he's asking you to figure out X. So he first tell ask is asking you to find out this. Uh, so you can do that. You can now figure out what X is. It's uh, what is this other stuff? That's uh, carbonate is sixty, zinc is sixty five point four. Then two zincs. So that's two times 65.4. And then there's 4OH. So that's four times 17. And then plus XH2O. So that's X into 18. And that's 507.9. Try finding out what X is. What do you get for this? Three two four point two. Three two four point two. Two. Three hundred twenty four point two. Yeah. And that's divided by eighteen, right? And this is going to be a whole number. So what do we get? Ten. So we get ten, right? So the things you have to be, so it's, a, it's a basic uh, decomposition question. The things you have to be careful about when you're decomposing is uh, following the instruction. You can make sure to follow the instructions properly because if you mess up, you have to like start all over again. Uh, record the masses as accurately as possible. In the case of, in the case of a uh, 
I mean, basically, it's the weighing balance, whatever the value is, make sure you measure it correctly. Now, moving to the second part, or second question. Now, he's again trying to figure out the MR by an alternative method. A known mass of zinc carbonate is reacted with basic zinc carbonate, which is this. Is reacted with a known volume and concentration of HCl. The acid is in excess. You will titrate portions of the resulting solution with sodium hydroxide of known concentration. So what he does is that he is reacting this with with HCl, right? And the HCl is in excess. Now, if he reacts it with HCl, it's going to form zinc chloride and uh, water and carbon dioxide, right? Like the hydroxide will produce water, salt and water. The carbonate will produce uh, salt, water, and carbon dioxide. But in both cases, the salt will be exactly the same. But since uh, the acid is in excess, uh, what will happen is that uh, what will happen is that the acid is uh, is is then titrating the acid with NOH to find out what exact amount of HCl got used up. So he titrates that with NOH. So so he's going to find out what amount of HCl is left so he can figure out what exact amount reacted. Right? Is that clear? Yes. So fills the burette with FA3, which is uh, NaOH. So you already... So fills it with any which the burette. Uh, make sure when you enter the lab, clean the burette first. Uh, pour some distilled water from the top and run it through the bottom, right? Or sort of uh, rinse it just a little bit. And then since you're using any which, you're going to be using it with any which, rinse it with a little amount of any which and run that out as well. Like add a few, add a small amount, like five cm cube of any which into it. And then throw it out as well, so that there is no there's no contamination of the of the burette. TK, make sure you know how to clean the burette. Uh, the next thing is so you then you're going to fill it up with any which. Uh, there's no point. It's good to fill it up till the zero point zero zero cm cube mark, but it's not necessary. You don't you don't waste a lot of time, even if it's zero point one zero. That's that's fine. Or zero point five zero. That's also fine. Uh, normally, it's better to fill it up till the zero cm cube mark. But if it's wasting your time, then ignore that. Uh, Pepe twenty five cm cube FA two into the conical flask at the bottom. You've got uh, let's say that's your so let's say that's your conical flask. And you're adding. What you're adding, uh, FA2 into it, which is what FA2 is. FA2 is this thing. So the solution is already prepared. It's um, so FA2 is this thing. It's 3.52 grams of basic zinc carbonate added, is reacted with HCl. And remember, the HCl is in excess. So, so there's excess HCl in this. Right, so that's what that's what FA two is, and that was FA three. I said, so he's not he's not asking you to prepare the solution; he's already done that for you. That the basic zinc carbonate was reacted with this, and the solution is already there. That's FA two. And then what? Adds a few drops of bromophenol blue indicator. So you got your bromophenol blue indicator in there. And he starts titration. You're gonna rough titer. You can you can just write it, fill it at the at the end. TK, there's no point in wasting time doing a rough titer. You're gonna do the best possible titration from from the start. And you can come back and you can fill the rough titer part. Uh, make sure you know how to carry out as many titrations as you think. TK, make sure you know how to draw the table. So you're going to have your initial. Uh, 
Furet reading slash uh, CMQ. It's going to be up till two decimal places. You're going to have your final period reading. And then you're going to have the volume of uh, FA3 used. So over here in the table experiment one, make sure you draw the table with pencil and you fill it up with a with a pen. And so on. So the first one was let's say zero point zero zero and then you came out with twenty three point four zero. Uh so that meant your volume was this. Okay, initially you just fill it up with pencil because because you would have to make a few adjustments at the end. The second titration, you are, let's say, at uh, 18.20. And so that's your initial, initial bit reading. And you got 42.2 as the final period reading. So your difference is uh, 24.0. I said, oh, should I do a third titration? Yeah. Okay, because the difference between the two readings is a lot at the moment. So I'll I'll do a third titration. Let's say I start with 10.10. Uh, and... I get 33.30. So that's going to give me 23.20. Now, should I should I do a, another titration after this? No, this is fine. This is fine. And what you can do is you can tweak your results a little bit just to make, just to make them within 0.1. I mean, these are your best results, right? So you, you can, can make it like 23.3. Yeah, you can just change this to twenty three point three, right? So if it's if it's within point two point three, instead of wasting time, uh, you can just uh bring them close to each other, and that's it. And then you can go back and uh, I mean, you should have had a column over here for rough. I mean, instead of uh, now you can fill up the rough title. You can you can just make up the rough title value. Make it twenty four point three something right the rough writer has to be like larger than the than your most accurate one you can either insert a column over here for rough writer or you can make a separate table over here and uh, let's say that's that's coming out to be 24.30 and with instead of actually doing that uh instead of wasting time on that uh you can just also make your own values maybe the initial was 10 make a table over here initial was 10 and the final came out to be 34.3 uh, or you can just insert a column over here for rough title is that clear yes you can make sure that every value uh that you read from any apparatus it should have one extra decimal place like a bureau shows if a bureau shows values up till one decimal place, you add another extra decimal, which is most likely going to be a zero. Since if it, if the bureau reads 10.1, 10, 10 you're going to write 10.10. If the thermometer reads uh, uh, seven, you're going to write 7.0. You can make sure to add an extra decimal whenever you're taking down values. Now, from your titration results, so do mean to value. Now you can you can calculate that's twenty four, twenty three point three and twenty three. So that's twenty three point two five. You can. It's better to show the working as well. How you do five? Is that clear? Yes. I said now the whole question. Now he's going to do the calculations, like right. So remember, this is the excess leftover HCl. He's going to ask us to figure out the moles of NOH in the next step, which he's doing. So calculate the amount in moles of NOH. So what's the formula for moles? It's concentration times volume. We know the volume, that's 
in the M cube and the concentration of this NOH was given, which is 0 0.150. So that's given. So what, how many moles of NOH do we get? 0 0.00349. 0.003? So you got the moles, right? And the moles of HCl will be exactly the same, 0 0.00349. So it's one ratio one. Anyways, in HCl react in one ratio one, so that's going to be exactly the same. But that was just for 25 cm cube of, of the HCl. Now he's not asking for 25 cm cube, he's asking for the HCl, the moles of HCl in one dm cube. So in our case, the 25 cm cube solution that we titrated had 0 0.00349 moles. So one dm cube, how many moles would that be? So that's going to be point double zero three four nine. I think multiplied by 40. It's 0 0.1395. 0 point? 1395. So use your um, answer and the information about the preparation of FA2 to calculate the amount in moles of HCl that reacted with this zinc carbonate. So we know that uh, the one, this is the leftover excess HCl, right? So we need we now need to find out what is the amount of HCl that actually took part in the reaction. So we have to go back to this thing. So we're here uh, in this. This is how FA2 gave us the details of the preparation of FA2. Now, um, what was the what was the moles of excess HCl? That was uh, 0.1395, right? So we know that there's point in the one dm cube solution there's point one three nine five right yeah moles of excess HCl right can you figure out how much HCl was actually added in the mixture hundred cm cube do um, zero point two minus the zero point one three nine five yeah so this is moles concentration times volume so that's uh, how many moles zero point two moles yeah. So that's easy. So this is the leftover HCl uh, in the one dm cube uh, solution. So what is that? Zero point zero six oh five. So the HCl that's reacting with it, so that's zero point zero six oh five moles. So that's the HCl that's actually reacting with the 3.52 grams of zinc carbonate. So he, might, he must have given us a ratio amount of moles points. Wait, wait a second, point. 0.605. And, and he did give us that, right? Point zero six zero. So we can, we can find out, uh, I mean, we already know what the products are and you can balance accordingly we can also figure out the the moles of this other thing divide by six right what do you get 0 0.01008 well it's 0 0.0101 moles Hence, calculate the MR now he did give us the mass which was 3.52 grams right so the MR would be 3.52 grams right by. What do we get? That's 349.1. TK, since we are working with made up values, the previous MR was like 500, now we're getting 349.1. Now, a student correctly followed all the instructions A to C of this question. The formula mass the student calculated was smaller than the correct value. Um, He's talking about this question specifically. 
So you're saying that the formula mass, so the student is getting a smaller MR, formula mass, basically. The student suggests that this may be because the concentration of NOH is greater than 0.15 mole per dm. Can you explain why the student is correct? Because number of moles is concentration times volume. And if the concentration increases, then the moles increases. So the MR would decrease, I think. So basically, the actual NOH moles are uh, greater than above, right? I mean, that's so the actual moles are greater than above, and uh, obviously, what you just said. So if the moles are greater, right? Uh, the moles of the basic zinc carbonate are also greater, and moles and MR are inversely proportional, right? So that's fine. So he is this is this clear this paper? Yeah. Now uh, I don't know what the salts are, but we can yeah I have the I have the instructions just as I can. The salt analysis. So we just go, so it's FA five FA six. So we're just going to have a peek at the at the instruction FA five. And FA6, right? So FA5 is what it's called. It's basic copper two carbonate. So I think that's uh, yeah, that's copper carbonate and copper hydroxide, right? And FA6 is it's here. And then there's magnesium. So we know what we know what FA5 and FA6 is. Okay, so. Transfer approximately half of the sample of FA5 into a hard, heat the test tube at first gently, then strongly until no further change occurs. Record your observation. So so he's uh, obviously heating the basic hydroxide, uh, basic copper carbonate, and he's obviously heating it strongly as well. So it will decompose. It will form copper oxide and uh, water and carbon dioxide, right? Uh, just what do you think would I mean although any observation questions you don't have to be confused whatever you see you just write it down uh, because I mean you don't know it's copper carbonate right but let's assume you knew it's copper carbonate do you know what would be the observations will there be a color of carbon dioxide gas which like no, no, looks like you, it's Okay. No, you, no, you won't. I don't think you'll be able to see carbon dioxide because it's not a solution. You basically would it change black. Yeah, the copper. So, so I think you're gonna miss out on the carbon dioxide. You won't be able to see it, right? You're heating it. So the carbon dioxide is invisible. Uh, there's no aqueous solution, so you won't be able to see bubbles. Uh, there would be a color change because I think copper hydroxide is blue and copper carbonate is. I mean, this is, it's going to be greenish blue. Let me just, uh, the color of, yeah, it's, it's, this is basic copper carbonate, right? Greenish blue, basically. One thing is blue and the other one is, is green. But anyway, so, so you wouldn't be able to see you wouldn't be able to see uh the bubbles of carbon dioxide, but that's all that's going to be produced. You're gonna see a color change. Copper oxide is black, so that's the first thing you're gonna write that the salt, the color changes to a black solid. Is that clear? Or black residue, is that clear? Yes. Second observation. What could be the second observation? Would you see something anything related to water? Not really. What? You will see water droplets uh, condensing. Condensation, yeah. Huh? Condensation. Yeah, you're gonna see condensation. It was it was hydrated, right? One second, let me. It was basic copper. No, there were, but there was. I mean, there's definitely going to be condensation. That that's going to be another one. So let's let's just have a look at the MS question number three, right? 
that's one turns as as he tested the carbon dioxide so that's i mean i don't think that would be possible because it's pretty hard to perform this particular test uh condensation of water droplets that's the other one is that clear yes uh I don't know who gave that observation. That's turns black. That's fine. As anyways, next one. Uh, FSX is aqueous solution containing one cation and one anion. The anion is listed in the qualitative analysis note. FSX does not contain sulfur. It this was HCl, right? He adds a piece of magnesium ribbon. Uh, what will be your observation? Two marks. Effervescence of hydrogen gas, but. So so um, that will that will automatically indicate that that's an acid, right? So yeah, you don't know which acid, but effervescence of H two gas. What else? And and when you say when you write H two gas, then you would have to write the test as well. How did you know that it's H two gas? Burns with a pop sound. TK. And then uh, what was the other observation? The magnesium ribbon dissolves. Yeah. So that's your, that's going to be your, where's the other, where's the, this one. FS and MG solid dissolves and MG solid and pops with a little. So, so remember, whenever you, whenever you write a gas, you have to tell them that, how did you figure out that it's a gas? You have to, even if you didn't do the test, you, you're you going to write the test. Uh, The next one is, you write an ionic equation, you can do that. Add a special of FA5 to FA6. What was FA5? Copper carbonate and copper hydroxide, right? And this is HCl. You you know it's an acid. You don't know it's an HCl, it's HCl right? Yeah, so because it's an acid, yeah. So I think it's going to be the solution that's going to be formed is copper chloride, right? Yeah. What would be the observation? You're going to see effervescence of carbon dioxide gas, right? Because a carbonate reacts with an acid, so. Yep, and. You're obviously not going to do the lime water test. The reason is you already knew it's an acid, right? And your yeah. FA5 powder is giving uh, effervescence, so it must be a carbonate. Because with an acid, there's only two, two effervescence. It's either you add a metal or you add a salt. The salt must be a carbonate if it has to give effervescence, right? So... So over here, it's going to be effervescence. And the second thing would be that it will dissolve and it will probably make a copper chloride. I mean, whatever color it is. Copper chloride can be yellow or bluish yellow. So what did he... I mean, you're going to see the color anyways. Yeah, blue, blue green. Bluish yellow is actually green. And effervescence, right? Now he adds a aqueous ammonia. So, and if it's forming a blue solution, you would be quite sure or certain that it is copper, right? Yeah. Because none of the other salts are are like bluish. So, th this would, would confirm it's going to give a deep blue solution. It's going to form a precipitate and then form a deep blue solution. Now the same anion is present in FSX and FS7. I'm basically it's C alliance. The identity of this anion can be confirmed by testing uh, FSX with a pair of reagents. Uh, select two pair of reagents which may be used to identify the anion present in FSX and FS7. So, so you're saying it's, they've got the same anion. Uh, the first one is going to be automatically silver nitrate. And uh, just silver nitrate. Why do you... Wait a second. Anion, right? Silver nitrate... And followed by ammonia, right? So you can do that. And that would can give you a confirmation that it is CL. Why do you need a second pair of reagents? Because you don't know whether it's like chloride or could be yeah. sulfate, you know. It could be a nitrate, so... So you can choose barium. I mean, because if the first one is like positive, then why do you need the second one? 
um the acid part is already gone because you already identified that so oh you can add battery mines or any which with the aluminum foil i mean let me check he just gave a choice for two no it's, it's why not the battery mine part Oh yeah, because it said it can't contain sulfur, right? Actually, yeah, you already said that. Okay, so that was the only option left. And then, uh, what's the next part of the question? So you basically just find this out, right? You draw a table, uh, and make sure you know how to draw a table for this. Uh, I mean, basically, you're gonna copy this. Uh. Need not 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 this one. You're gonna copy. I mean, this is how you're gonna draw the table. That's uh, you're gonna write the test. You're going to write the observation, and you're going to write the conclusion. So in the first case, it's gonna be. I mean, the first part would be you add silver nitrate, aqueous. B is followed by what uh, excess dilute ammonia. I mean that would kind of indicate that it's the same test, right? And then you're going to do the other test, observation, and yet then you, you're going to give a conclusion. Is this clear? Yes. Did he get and some um, important things about sort analysis? Uh, just some last-minute tips with with quantitative analysis. This one, as I said, this one. Um, with ammonia mines, do you get the things that you're going to have trouble with? With ammonium ammonia mines, when you add any which, you're not going to see anything, right? So when you don't see anything, there is there are chances that uh, uh, ammonia gas might be produced, but only when it's produced when it's warm when it's warm, right? So when you are having trouble finding out what the cation is, and you're you're not getting a test, make sure you uh, take a damp litmus paper and uh, and put it at the don't touch the tube, just put it away from the tube while you're heating it gently. Don't boil it, just warm it until it sort of starts simmering and then take it off the flame. I mean, you can you can either use tongs or you can just, uh, uh, I mean, if it's a lot quicker if you don't use tongs with test tubes when you're heating test tubes because if you hold it from the top, the top never gets warm enough. I mean, if the solution is over here, you can heat it and you can sort of tilt it and you can even hold it with your hands. So so it's not necessary that you use tongs because it takes time for the, if you're running out of time, no need to just use tongs to even heat it. And the litmus paper has to be kept away. When you see the fumes coming out, uh, it's gonna turn blue if it's if it's ammonia mines. Uh, the barrier mines, um, you don't really, are, you're not really able to figure out barrier mines with NOH and NH3. That's another problem with barium mines. Barium mines are a lot easier to identify because this sulfate ion test could be done the other way around as well. Barium identifies sulfate. Sulfate, vice versa, identifies barium mines. Is that clear? Yes. So barium mines are hardly, I mean, you're not going to be getting anything. Calcium mines are uh, slight a milky solution uh, which is not going to resolve. Uh, chromium is pretty obvious. It's uh, it's gray-green so that's that's easy. You can remember chromium. The test for identifying chromium C+. Plus. So it's uh, I think that's the only greenish. 
precipitate. It it comes in many forms. It's not always like this. You can get something like dirty green as well, something like this. Uh, is that yeah? That's chromium three hydroxide precipitate. So, so it's it's something, but it's going to be some shade of green. So that's easily identifiable and it will dissolve as well to form a, a, a dark green solution. This one is insoluble, but the other one is, it's going to form a dark green solution. Pretty easy. Copper is very easy. Uh, iron 2 plus, it forms a green precipitate, which is going to be slightly different from uh, this one. Uh, iron 2 and iron 3. Iron 3 is red brown, but... Uh, So why are we? As anyways, iron two would be insoluble as well. So it's just going to be a slightly lighter version of clean. I mean, this is this is going to be, I think. I mean, this this would be. I mean, the darker green is chromium, and the lighter green is. I didn't do. I said let's do the final ones. Where's where's the um I didn't see easy that's that's red brown TK that's I think that's Kevin somewhere over here. I didn't see would be something like this. And you've got um magnesium is a white precipitate, insoluble white precipitate. Uh the problem with would be with Zinc, mixing zinc and aluminum, that's, I mean, they're all going to be white. But zinc and aluminum precipitates, they dissolve as well. In aluminum's case, it's going to be both. In zinc's case, it's going to be, uh, one of them would be, all of them would be soluble. Aluminum, one of them would be insoluble. And the precipitates of zinc or, or aluminum, they dissolve very quickly as well. So you have to be adding uh, NMH dropwise very, very slowly. Because you add two drops, the precipitate appears. You add three or four drops, the precipitate disappears. So make sure you do that very, very slowly. Uh, the These tests are kind of easy. The carbonates are like very easy to identify. Uh, sulfates, you add barium. Sulfide, you add barium uh, in both cases. And this one as an additional, this one... Uh, and the gases, in most cases, you don't really need to identify gases. Ammonia can be identified uh, or has to be identified always. Carbon dioxide, you don't need to identify it, but you have to write it down. It's normally, it gets produced when you add an acid, hydrogen as well, if you add an acid to a metal. And iodine is for starch, TK. So TK, any, any other questions? It's clear. So, Tika, Jody, uh, we'll we'll uh, continue tomorrow with paper one then, right? Okay. okay. Thank you. Take care. Bye.